probably the most intriguing story of this upcoming NFL free agency period is going to be where does Kirk Cousins end up signing? Who is he going to choose? Where is he going to go? Because we've been waiting for this moment, honestly, for a couple of damn years now. And as things are starting to shake out and we see kind of how the market is set up, it looks like there are three viable possible options, three realistic choices for him. The New York Jets, the Denver Broncos, and the Minnesota Vikings. You look at the New York Jets, you've seen several reports talking about that they're all in on Kirk Cousins, that they will do whatever it takes to get him, they will pay him massively, meaning to me they will make him the highest paid quarterback in the league, at least for that moment, and guys like Aaron Rodgers and others are looking and like, oh baby, if he gets that, imagine what I'm going to get. And that's exactly the reaction that they should have. But you look at the Jets, and you look at a team that looked like they were in tank mode in 2017. You know, McCagnan, the GM, stripped that team down. And not saying it didn't need to happen, but it looked like they were clearly in tank mode. But Talib Bowles didn't fully and completely cooperate. Like, he showed his coaching chops in 2017. He showed that he was a decent head coach, at least for that season with that roster. He got way more out of them than anybody could expect. And as a result, is why the Jets aren't picking first or second in the draft. They're picking six in round one instead, because they won some games that you didn't expect them to and shouldn't have realistically expected them to. So you look at a team now, it's kind of a blank slate. You know you've got a decent head coach in place. Yeah, the infrastructure in terms of the roster isn't great around you, but they've got a ton of cap space, they've got marquee draft picks, and they've got a general manager who's going to try and be aggressive, who surely, with all that cap space, is going to be able to bring in other guys in free agency as well. And knowing that the Jets, being the Jets, in order to get a guy like Kirk Cousins would have to overpay him, you know if you're Kirk Cousins that they, if money is incredibly important to you, they will commit to you as much, if not any anything more, than anybody else will. So they are a viable option for that, in which you could use them for leverage. I'm sorry, if Kirk Cousins makes a pure money grab, which going to the Jets would be purely a money grab than nothing else, then he deserves the fate that awaits him. Why in the hell would you go to the Jets? Why the hell would you go into New York and play second fiddle to the Giants? Furthermore, why would you go into that situation where that team, honestly, if you're being realistic, for so many years of criminally neglecting the offensive side of the ball in the draft every year since 2010, spending two of the first three picks on the defensive side of the ball, not having spent a first-round pick on the offensive side of the ball since 2009, which, oh, lo and behold, that was the Sanchez, Mr. Butt Fumble himself, Mark Sanchez. You're going to go into a situation where if you thought – it wasn't the greatest in Washington in 2017 because you watched Pierre Garçon and Deshaun Jackson go out the door and the team didn't effectively replace them and you didn't have a running game and you had the injuries on the offensive line. What do you expect is going to happen with the Jets? You're going to get crushed, especially initially. You use them as leverage to sit there and get yourself the biggest deal possible because you can have that threat of saying, well, they're offering me this much. You might not have to totally match it, but I want you to get close. Show me your commitment. Show me you're not the Redskins. Show me you believe in me. That's what the Jets should be in this game for Kirk Cousins, is nothing more than leverage. If he has any sense to him at all, it's nothing more than leverage. Then you look at the Denver Broncos. A team, it's funny enough, just a couple of seasons ago, won the Super Bowl. It's quickly easy to forget just how quickly things went south a little bit for them. You know, that 2015 season, Super Bowl 50, they were the champs. And that was with a washed up over the hill terrible Peyton Manning. Like they had a first ballot Hall of Fame quarterback who absolutely sucked and found a way to win the Super Bowl. And when you look at that team, you still have a decent defensive infrastructure. Yes, they just traded away Aqib Tlaib, but they still have talent there and you still have Von Miller. So this is still a defense that could be top flight in the National Football League offensively. You've got Demiris Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders outside. So you have better weapons outside than what you had with the Redskins in 2017, you know, a team that is isn't trying to improve their offensive line. They spent a first round pick on Garrett Bowles. They've invested some draft picks in the running back position, and they may be looking to do so again, um, maybe getting a tight end as well. It's an appealing option because this is a team just a couple of years ago that was in a position they won it all. You might think from Kirk Cousins' standpoint, while they might not have quite the cap space 
of the New York Jets. They just did the Akib Talib trade. They're going to have quite a bit of cap space. They can figure out a way to get it done. And it's a situation you come into with some of the uncertainty in the AFC West with the switch of the Chiefs to Patrick Mahomes, to what's going, going to go on with John Gruden and Derek Carr in Oakland, to the Chargers. You know, there's still an opportunity there that you could still rise to the top of that division very quickly and get into the playoffs and then see what happens. But ultimately, I look at it, and yes, you could say maybe the lure of being able to play in an organization that's run by John Elway is great. But to me, the clear-cut option here has to be the Minnesota Vikings. When you're looking at it from Kirk Cousins' standpoint, the Vikings are going to be able to offer him a lot of money. He comes into a situation, a team that just went to the NFC Championship game with a quarterback, a lesser quarterback in Case Keenum, without their guy, Dalvin Cook, at the running back position because he tore his knee up early in the year. You look at that infrastructure offensively, and you see one of the best one-two combinations in the league at wide receiver in Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs, a solid tight end in Kyle Rudolph. You get Dalvin Cook back from his injury in 2018. You've got him, Latavius Murray. Maybe you've also still got Jarek McKinnon in the fold. You've got an improved offensive line that was at least of the same quality of the Washington offensive line in 2017, especially once they started dealing with some of the injuries. And you've got an elite-level defense that NFC Championship game collapse aside was historically great against third downs in 2017 and is good enough to win a Super Bowl with stars that are still in the peak of their career. Like, to me, this is the obvious answer. If you're Kirk Cousins, you could go to Minnesota, get paid handsomely, maybe not as much as the Jets or perhaps even Denver, but still make a ton of money, and you've already made a ton of money, and you could go in there with a coach that knows what he's doing and Mike Zimmer, with an offense with a lot of talent around you, similar to what you had a couple of years ago with Jay Gruden and the Redskins, when you had Desha Deshaun Jackson and Pierre Garçon and so forth, and Jordan Reed healthy, and a pretty good offensive line, you could make the argument that overall the offense in Minnesota might be better for you. And most certainly that defense is, if you're a Kirk Cousins, you could get paid and have the chance to contend for a Super Bowl immediately in 2018. I don't care if the Jets pay you $10 million more a year. Yeah, I know I'm not in the position to make that decision, so it's easy for me to say, but Jesus Christ, especially when you factor in taxes and such, how much more money is $35 million a year, let's I'm just throwing out a number, as opposed to $25 million a year? It's not really $10 million, it's probably more like $4 or $5 million. This is still a crap ton of money, more than you should ever be able to reasonably expect spending. And look at the situation that you would be put into, and some of the pressure that you might have, but on the flip side you wouldn't have because you would have other guys that could help you. Like to me this is so obvious. If Kirk Cousins goes anywhere else, he's crazy. Kirk Cousins' only destination, his best destination, his optimal situation to me has to be the Minnesota Vikings. It has to be. And if you were in his position, wouldn't you agree? If you were in his position, wouldn't you think the same thing? If you were in his position, wouldn't it take some unforeseen circumstance or a complete and total miracle to do anything other than use the Jets and Broncos as leverage to get yourself the best possible deal with the Minnesota Vikings? I mean, to me, the answer is simple. Maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll find out in a couple of days. But I just can't see him going anywhere else other than Minnesota. And if he does go anywhere else other than Minnesota then I question why you made such a big deal about being able to get into free agency, even on Twitter. It's the first time since 2007 I can choose where I'm going to play football. And then you would make the choice, potentially, to join the Jets? As opposed to the Vikings who could win a Super Bowl with you next year? Imagine making that decision. Good Lord.